This is the lowest of the low. I truly believe they are not physically capable of making one as worse as any of these five. So, I truly believe they are not physically capable of making one as worse as any of these five. Of making one as worse as any of these five. Of making one as worse as any of these five. Of making one as worse as any of these five. So. <sighs> I hate me. Now let's be clear before we begin, this toy is not as bad as anything in my top five worst of all time. I still stand by that list, and that includes Demolishor. If you like it, that's fine, but I at least require my action figures to be able to stand without using their arms like a plastic tripod. This is why Beast Machine's Jetstorm had a normal robot mode, cause no legs is stupid. But that said... I will admit, this toy did make me rethink that list for a bit. Prime was a rough time for Transformers. Originally designed the way Generations toys of the time were, it wasn't long before the designers got stuck with a much smaller budget for designing figures, and with a new cartoon rolling out, they didn't exactly have time to perfect things. Or come close to perfect. Or be all that great. Did I mention this was a rough time? Now even the best toy lines drop a bomb on occasion. So when you have a struggling design team putting out a disaster of a toy, you create a bomb capable of destroying any birthday or Christmas. Arachnid, a 2012 toy from the new Transformers Prime series. A great character in the show really stands out for making a genuinely creepy and threatening villainous in a franchise that had like three evil girls in the cartoons and one turned good via the power of love. So I was really eager to get a good toy of her. And I did get that good toy. In a $5 Legion figure. Because it sure wasn't from the deluxe. I mean, that's why I made the top five worst. I honestly thought we were beyond toys this bad. I mean, really. I thought the designers were better than this. The vehicle modes of stylized RAH-66 Stealth Helicopter, and already we have a problem. Do you know what doesn't say stealth to me? Bright purple rotor blades. But they're not even blades, they're spinning spider legs. There isn't even an attempt to hide it. In the air, she'd look like a purple buzzsaw. On the ground, well, yeah, she looks like a helicopter with spider legs. Oh, but they're not spider legs either. The box says it's a triple-bladed sword, which I might actually buy if they were helicopter blades. I mean, yeah, it's stupid, but it fits the description. So we've only talked about one thing so far, and I don't even know what it is. It's like everyone had a different idea. All I know for sure is they decided that this look was so vital to the robot mode it had to sacrifice the vehicle mode to get it. And we'll get to that soon. For now, we will be fair. The helicopter's not all that bad looking in and of itself. It's a sleek stealth copter appropriate to the character, with the tiniest Decepticon symbol on the front, almost like she's ashamed of her own allegiance. Oh sure, her tail rotor is so small it probably flies like a spinning top, but it's okay beyond that. And apparently they were really proud of this look, because they decided as a gimmick, Arachnid should have an opening canopy. And there's even a seat inside. And this might be neat. But this is Arachnid. It's kind of like watching the movie Titanic. You know this is not going to end well. 
And this little seat is going to give us a lot of problems later, but we will get to that. For now, we can't complete this look at vehicle mode without seeing it with its weapons attached. Cause that is the best part. Cause what's sillier than a stealth helicopter with bright purple spider legs? A stealth helicopter with bright purple spider legs and tennis rackets attached to the sides. They're stingers. Yeah, sure they are. Stingers with a bunch of spider legs molded around them. Since when do spiders have stingers? Anyway, they can be mounted in a more logical position, but no stock photo does this. They do it the silly way, which, when you remove the rotor, makes her look like a robotic lobster, which would kind of make her the first female triple-changing transformer of all time. At least then, she might have a little bit of merit to her. And honestly, part of me could kind of get behind the idea of flying Decepticon lobsters. I mean, think of it. Optimus would never see it coming. Megatron suddenly replaces the Seekers with the flying Decepticon Crustacean Platoon. Of course the vehicle mode is only half of this disaster piece. We haven't even gotten to the robot mode yet. And what a robot mode it is. The interesting thing here is in the show, Arachnid is clearly using the cockpit of the helicopter for her shoulders, something the Legion toy got right. And then there's the Deluxe with arms thinner than the cardboard she was packaged onto. This should be a marriage made in heaven. The problem with designing female Transformers is the female form doesn't generally offer the bulk the designers need to make it turn into a car or a plane. I mean, when you're the rough and tumble strong arm, not a problem. The femme fatale arachnid? It's kind of necessary to be slimmed down. And a stealth helicopter should solve that problem. Very little bulk. Should be a simple bit of engineering. Instead, half of her vehicle still hangs off of her back, and with her tiny heel spurs, she barely balances. She could fall over just from the dust accumulating on her. I'm not even kidding. When I went to grab this toy for review, I found her toppled into my Viacons because of months of neglect. Almost like she fainted for attention. Also doesn't help that the arms are literally two panels held with a thin plastic strut, with a completely flat hand with a hole straight through the palm, like she tried to catch a cannonball. I am not exaggerating when I say these are the worst designed arms I have ever seen on a Transformer, especially when there's no excuse for it. Look at how much bulk is on her back. The Legion toy figured this out, and it should have been where her arms came from. Why not the Deluxe? Well, it was because they were so proud of that gimmick, remember? That section had to stay intact, so that really cool canopy thing could be a gimmick in the toy. I mean, they really needed to have that, and unlike all of these other gimmicks that I've reviewed on Plastic Addict, it doesn't affect the robot mode at all. Except for the arms thing. And the back heavy thing. Oh, and this one other little thing. That being the fact that the cockpit seat is molded to the back of her head and severely limits the neck articulation as a result. Also, the canopy can open up for a pilot she will never have. So worth it! I suppose the other reason to keep the canopy there was so her helicopter blades could peg into it, creating her signature overhanging spider leg look. Cause there's certainly no other way they could have engineered that, aside from leaving a huge chunk of bulk on her back. The remainder of the tail even splits and becomes two more faux spider legs that hang off of her butt, bringing her total number of limbs to the same number a spider has. Nine. There are days when I am simply amazed that the designers are able to create any robot they want out of any shape they want, animal, vehicle, object, and create a functioning toy out of the whole thing. And then there's days like today, when I honestly wonder how they tie their shoes in the morning by themselves. And no, don't give me show accuracy. They designed the toys first and based the animation on that. If this was fixed from the start, the show would have reflected it. Then again, the differences in design might have had to do with Hasbro changing budgets so abruptly. In original concept, she might have looked closer to the show. The Legion toy might be a leftover byproduct of that. 
the same way Movie Megatron's first Legends class toy still had the original head as- Oh my god, why am I defending this toy? Oh, oh my god. Please, please tell me I did not go soft in all of that downtime. Oh my god, oh no. Okay, okay, no, no, just a momentary lapse. Okay, mount up, we'll do this right, and get this back, get this back under control. I got this, I got this. Detailing, we'll talk detailing. Looking her over, there's very few paint apps to see. Surprising considering how low her plastic content is. You'd think the budget would balance, or, oh, I don't know, the paint on the robot mode might have taken priority over her helicopter lobster claws. Wouldn't be so bad if the picture on the box didn't show her original deco being much better. But at least the sculpting is nice. The head looks good and the crooked horns are a mess. I'm doing it again! What is wrong with- I cannot take it easy on such a bad toy! Bad attic! Bad attic! Bad attic! Bad attic! But give them credit. It looks unique. Not like any other head design I've ever seen. It is impressive, after 30 years and thousands of toys, to still be able to come up with a head design so original, so unique, something totally fresh from their imaginations. Or maybe a billion dollar movie franchise lets you get away with plagiarism. Either way, nice ends now. I'm all out of positives. Let's talk accessories, like that triple bladed spider leg helicopter rotor sword thing. It can detach and peg to the side of her arm, and good luck getting a decent spin on it without crashing into her robot legs or her butt legs. Oddly enough, the toy is so badly balanced it actually stands better with this huge hunk of plastic on her arm. I can't even get Megatrons to do that sometimes. What has no upside, however, are the actual weapons. So you know how using one set of the pegs on her weapons turned her into cyborg seafood? Here's how that peg looks in robot mode. Somehow, and I don't know how, it manages to look stupider. So these weapons shouldn't have bothered with the second peg in the first place. Only one of them works in both modes, and it's the same peg. Admittedly, the position still looks awkward, but at least better. And hey, rotate it up, and it still looks like a tennis racket. Add a headband, some athletic shorts, and she's ready for Wimbledon, all 20 tons and 20 feet of her and she'd probably still lose to Serena Williams. Yes, people, this toy is so absurd, I can make tennis jokes. So maybe you're thinking articulation will be the saving grace. I mean, she does have 13 meaningful points of it, which would not be shabby if it wasn't for just one problem. Everything. The neck barely has any range because of that cockpit chair they just absolutely had to have and it's still inside the cockpit itself, so it blocks the ball joint in all directions. The shoulders, which are halfway down her chest, are ball jointed, but the panels are so long and her back kibble so bad, there's no position where they can move outward in any logical angle. So forward and back rotation is all they get. Also hindered by bad panels, the elbows, which in spite of being doubled up, only make it to a hindered 90 degrees. The hand pivots up and down, but even all the way down, there's plastic in the way keeping it from being flush to her arm, so any bending from here makes her wrist look broken. You've got ball jointed hips that only move outward a little bit, only move forward a little bit. They are next to useless with little range, and that also makes her 90 degree knee bend completely useless, because even if you could, get the leg forward to make use of it, she only stands if the legs are straight and directly under her. Even if it worked, it still wouldn't work. Speaking of, if you look closely, you'll notice she's designed to have thigh swivels as well, which are completely useless because there's no way to move them. Ultimately, the only articulation on the whole toy that works the way it was intended are those stupid spider legs. And given they're nowhere near long enough to use for her spider walk mode from the cartoon, it's really the only job they do right. Arachnid may not be top five bad, but wow is she close. 
She is ideal as a plastic addict toy. A few good qualities, a whole lot of bad ones. I could let the design team off easy and blame the budget change. I mean, she's far from the only iffy toy from that time period. But others came out really good. So maybe there's no excuse for the first new female villain since Starscream's Rule 63 clone to be broken on arrival. Thus I sit here, waiting for a little bit more evil gender equality to creep into Transformers once again so we can give it another go. In the meantime, I am the plastic addict, punishing painful plastic no matter how long it takes me. And you will be seeing me again soon. As for Arachnid, you'll have to go see her on the tennis court. Fifteen love! Don't laugh. How often do you throw tennis balls at action figures? <laughs>